The United States has the highest incarceration rate in the world, with men making up about 90% of that population. 70% haven't completed high school, and black males represent the largest percentage of inmates held in custody today. How many people you know been got out of jail this week and back next week? I know a bunch of them. Recidivism is the criminal act resulting in the rearrest, reconviction, or return to custody within three years following an inmate's release, many of who are highly familiar with this act. I've been in prison a grand total of five times. Last time I went to prison, I never got out of prison. I was still in prison and went right back to prison. A life of crime usually accompanies a life of barriers. The justice system is made to rehabilitate criminals, but there are other muted issues that follow an inmate's release. We do call this department the Department of Corrections, uh, so I imagine it's supposed to be correcting something. People have a tendency to think that a person that's just coming out of incarceration, any element of incarceration, is somebody less than and should be treated as the other or one of those. Clearly, once a, I mean, once a person comes into prison, you know, for the rest of their life, they're an ex-inmate. And that's certainly problematic from a just basic, getting basic needs, employment, housing, etc. Trapped in a revolving cycle of recidivism and feeling like the world is against them, how can an ex-inmate follow the path of a productive member in society? Or do they? Are they trapped forever? An inmate released from custody has a high possibility of returning within three years. However, there are many silent factors that influence this recidivism. Low education is a huge setback. Now add a criminal record? Hmm. Getting a job seems almost impossible. Education? Uh, Florida Department of Corrections. Most inmates that are in prison uh, have, have less than a sixth grade functioning education. Barriers like education and criminal records provide an easy way for an ex-inmate to become discouraged. You're scared. The average person getting out of prison and jail to kind of find a job that automatically they're scared. The, the truth is you're afraid because you don't know what, I mean, how my record, how this is going to affect my getting a job. So education is a big part of why they're there in the first place. A lot of dropouts, high school dropouts. Uh, so we know when you drop out of school, your employment uh, options are going to be greatly limited. As soon as you get the application, look at, oh man, you fill out the application, here you go. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? If yes, give a detail. That's where it stops. That's where it stops. An article in 2013's November edition of The Nation review discrimination in the workplace. With a criminal record, whites have a 17% chance of gaining a job and blacks have a 5% chance. This makes it extremely difficult to handle financial responsibilities. The financial burden that's placed on offenders, especially those released from prison, and not just that, even those put on supervision, they're given a second chance. Instead of prison, we're gonna put you under house arrest or we're gonna put you on probation and we're gonna follow you, we're gonna track you. Um, I, I think the, the piling on of financial sanctions and burdens is, it's, it's an issue as criminologists we really have not looked at thoroughly. One common and more crippling financial burden is making child support payments. Uh, child support, it, 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 it's, the system is, oh man, it's twisted on child support. Yeah, if you get caught up in that finance um, cycle, yeah, if you don't pull yourself out of and get stabilized, 
because uh, yeah, until that child turns 18, you're gonna your child support payments are gonna be stacking up. Despite the difficulty of getting hired, not keeping up with child support payments is a fast way to land back in jail. Some can easily fall back into a criminal lifestyle just to make ends meet. Last time I had a child support warrant, I had to pay like $1,500 cash, you know, before I got released out of here. And I paid it because I'm not just no deadbeat father, you know. I, I do want to take care of my responsibility, you know, and I, I'm going to take care of my responsibility. No way, no, no. No matter what kind of way I have to do it, you know, if it take, you know what I'm saying, going back to the struggle. Shelton has been in and out of jail and also served time in prison. He believes the struggle with finances would be unnecessary if more employers would consider hiring workers with a criminal record. Going to a boss man who, who have jobs like that to provide for you and they don't want to give you that opportunity and you you walking away with your head down, you know, instead of holding your head up and trying to go on and search, keep searching and search till you find it. You know, it, it's real discouraging, man. You can, like, actually lose yourself. You, uh, you, it make you want to fall back. Inmates aren't the only ones affected by recidivism. Family relationships play a substantial role in an inmate's success rate and personal morale. The effect on the family is, is really terrible. You're not just coming to prison by yourself. You're not just coming to jail by yourself. When you leave uh, as head of household, when you're taken away from that family, now they're going lag. While an inmate loses freedom, their families can suffer from the loss of a strong male figure, something that Shelton's family is lacking. His little brother, you know, his father is not as in, in his life. His natural father is not as in, in his life. So Shelton was his father. And I'm really losing control of him. My brother, which is nine, he thinks he can do anything and can get away with anything. And he tries to talk back to my mom and she kind of lets it slide. But if my brother was out, no, nah, none of that would be going down. I miss Shelton on that part because his brother listened to him more so than he did me. He was like maybe two or one or, or maybe three years old. And he was beating on that glass like he knew what I was in this taste. He was beating on the glass like, my brother, my brother, let my brother out. You know what I'm saying? Saying the words right there. And I was like, man, it affected me a lot, you know knowing that my brother knew who I was. If inmates can stay tied you know, to their families, bonded, have communication, they're more likely to be successful, which makes kind of logical sense. Everything we go through, we're going to need support. You're going to need the brother to lift you up, or, you know what I'm saying, the mother to lift you up, somebody to give you that encouragement to go on, you know, not give up on yourself. As a society, we, you know, we put a mark on them and we don't, I think we need, we need to give, to think more about redemption and forgiveness. That someone has done wrong, they've paid their price, and we don't need to continue to punish them and put up structural impediments for them to be normal law-abiding citizens. I would just basically say they stereotype us and say, you don't deserve this because you done been down that road or you done, you done, you done, you was a failure in life, you know? And I just, it, it, it's really disturbing, you know? On the outside, an inmate appears to be free, but society has a little way of changing that perspective. As a society, as a government, 
are there some things we can do to alleviate that strain on, on people? And that's true whether you've been in prison or not, but certainly for an ex-prisoner, it's a particularly a salient issue. Been to prison, you got out, and you've changed, you've changed, you've truly changed. You just gotta be straight up. You know, you make yourself uh, as presentable uh, looking as you can when you go for that interview, and you just be straight up with the manager and just let them know, whether it's at McDonald's, Burger King, a construction site, whatever, that, hey, I just got out of prison uh, for one, two, five, ten years, whatever, but I'm a changed man. I'm not the same person because people can change. I really just feel like everyone deserves a second chance. You can't judge their past as um, some people are willing to make a change. I believe that my brother can and is willing to make a change. Now, I know I'm going to a higher level, you know, of elevating, you know what I'm saying, within myself, you know, and within society, you know. I know that I ain't no sorry person. I love hands-on job, you know. I love to work, you know, so when I get out of here, I'm not going to stop here. I'm going looking for me a job until I find one. If you're going to rehabilitate, give them build a place that will hire felons. Provide us with jobs when we get out of there. You know, have them lined up for us. You know, you should have this, like, they should have a program where all felony, you know what I'm saying, just a jobs for them. You know? I think people in that situation have to reach out to their families, their community, to try and help them transition back in to, to society. You're set up for a step up. So I told them don't let that stop them because even at my, now that I'm 50, I'm not gonna let whatever Somebody says about me, stop me. So I told him, you gotta just keep pressing on, keep pressing on. Don't give up on life. That's what I try to tell him. I threw all that away. Cause I didn't have somebody that would sit down and try to get inside this thing up here. I needed somebody to rent space between my ears in a meaningful way that I could see what the hell they're talking about. Just gonna ha there's going to have to be some soul searching on the part of the person getting out of prison to have that desire to change and not go back to prison. And I've seen people get out of prison who only went one time and who said, I'm, who really did change, they got real.